Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to learn about the osteology of the cranial cavity, cranial nerves at the base of the skull and the meninges surrounding the brain. So let's begin with the osteology. So for our orientation of course that is the anterior aspect of the skull and here is the superior view of the skull. What we see here is the calvaria, the roof of the skull, the, the sutures here, coronal suture, and the sagittal suture of course. So we remove the calvaria and by removing the calvaria we can actually look at the base of the base of the skull. First we want to look at the bones that we have here. Um, the ethmoid bone right anterior um, part of the skull here. Then we have the part of the frontal bone, the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, Moving backward, we have the, the rest of the sphenoid bone here, that is the body of the sphenoid bone, the dorsum cella, the hypophysial fossa in the middle. Moving backward, on the sides we have the temporal bone, the petrous part of the temporal bone, right here. Then we have the occipital bone back there. And as you can see, here is the foramen magnum inside the occipital bone. Okay. Now, in regards to the cranial cavity, um, of course, there are three cavities at the base of the skull. The anterior cranial fossa right here, which is between the frontal bone and the posterior border of the lesser wing of a sphenoid bone. That is anterior cranial fossa. In this fossa, we can see the crystal galley of the ethmoid bone and the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone on each side of the crystal galley. Moving backward, here is the middle cranial fossa. Okay, one on each side and the openings in the middle cranial fossa are the superior orbital fissure that I need actually to get help from my pipe cleaner when I pass the pipe cleaner through the orbit and on the back side you can see the pipe cleaner passes through the superior orbital fissure right there. Then we have the foramen rotundum right there, foramen oval or ovali, and then foramen spinosum um, right there. Okay, actually better view of the foramen spinosum here, right behind the foramen ovali. And back here is the foramen lacerum. Okay, moving backward. Oh, actually, we, uh, I didn't show you the optic canal right here. Optic canal. Okay, moving backward in the posterior cranial fossa, we have the internal acoustic meatus, one on each side, the jugular foramen, let me actually pass my pipe cleaner through the jugular foramen that you can see easily, jugular foramen. And then back here, we have the hypoglossal canal. Hopefully, if I pass my pipe cleaner here, you can, I mean the probe, right there, that is the hypoglossal canal. And foramen magnum. Then practically, the posterior cranial fossa is between the occipital bone and the petrous part of the temporal bone, this area, which is filled by the cerebellum that we will see in a specimen in a second. Okay, now we want to walk you through the intracranial compartments and the orientation of the, of, the, of the brain inside the cranial cavity. In order to do that, we are going to actually go through the layers from superficial to deep. The first layer that we can see, by the way, that's the, the orientation that is a superior view, superior view of the skull. So the first layer is the scalp. 
that has already been cut. Then we have the calvaria, the roof of the skull. That part has already been cut as well. And then the next layer that we are looking at is the dura matter. So a couple of points here before we remove the dura. One is the location of the middle meningeal artery and the branches of this artery, which as you can see is running between the skull and the dura matter, okay, on both sides. And also I can pass my probe into the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, so the next step is to reflect or actually to remove the dura. Okay, you can see the falx cerebri. See that how it's located between two cerebral hemispheres. Okay, and then the tentorium cerebelli right here. Okay, just this part. Okay. Now, since the brain has already been um, removed, so it's easily, we can actually take it out from the cranial cavity. However, since we want to see the cranial nerves later, good to know that the olfactory bulb right here, okay, right there, an olfactory tract attached to the base of the, of the brain. Okay, now we remove the brain and we go with the base of the skull. Okay, now we want to walk you through the base of the skull, but before we need to orient ourselves. That is the anterior side, here is the posterior side, the right, and the left. Okay, starting from the anterior side, you can see the dura mater here, is being detached from the, from the skull. We can see the superior sagittal sinus here between two layers of the dura. Also the attachment of the false cerebri to the crystal galley, okay, right there. Moving backward, here is the anterior cranial fossa. Okay, so the posterior border here is the lesser wing of sphenoid bone. In the middle, we have the middle cranial fossa, which is between the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and the petrous part of the temporal bone, middle cranial fossa. And in the midline here, we have the pituitary gland right here sitting in the hypophysial fossa, and that is the stalk of the pituitary gland. Moving backward, here we have the posterior cranial fossa, and then you can see the tentorium cerebelli right here attaching to the, um, to the petrous part of the temporal bone. And of course, here is the foramen magnum of the skull and a spinal cord back there. Okay. And also in the middle cranial fossa, we can see the middle meningeal artery running between the skull and the dura. Of course, the dura has been removed. You can see the grooves on the skull which demonstrate the branches of the, the location of the branches of middle meningeal artery. Okay, so we already uh, have seen the cranial nerve one or olfactory bulb and olfactory tract attached to the brain, base of the brain. But here is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone that uh, gives passageway to the cranial nerve one. Moving backward, we have cranial nerve two here, optic nerve, Moving backward, we have the internal carotid artery, one on each side, and the branches of the internal carotid artery, which goes into the orbit through the optic canal. This is the ophthalmic artery. So let's zoom in here to have a better look of the ophthalmic artery. Okay, here is the ophthalmic artery right there passes under the opt optic nerve and one here. Now we are moving back we can see the cranial nerve 3, oculomotor nerve one on each side. Moving backward here is the cranial nerve 4, trochlear nerve 
one on each side. Good to know that on this on both sides of the where the pituitary gland is here, we have the cavernous sinus that has already been opened. That's why you can see the better um, actually length of the cranial nerve three and four. Okay, moving backward, here we have a cranial nerve five, trigeminal nerve, and then if we can we go forward here, you can see the expansion here, which is the trigeminal ganglion. Okay, now we want to have a close-up of the branches of cranial nerve 5, starting with V1, this one, ophthalmic nerve. Then I'm going to remove the probe, the needle under V2, maxillary nerve. And the last but not least, V3, or mandibular nerve. Moving backward, we have the cranial nerve 6, abducens, and then cranial nerve seven and eight. Back here, passing through the internal acoustic meatus. Of course, one on each side. Then we have cranial nerve nine, 10, 11. Good to know that for seven and eight and also nine, 10, 11, it's not easy to separate from each other. So we just go, um, actually we mention them together. However, back here for 9, 10, 11, we can see the spinal part of 11 coming all the way up to pass, to join to the other nerves. And the last but not least, cranial nerve 12, hypoglossal nerve, passing through the hypoglossal canal, and the nerve actually has been split on each side, okay? Down here we have, as I mentioned before, the spinal cord, and then on each side of the spinal cord here, we have the internal, uh, sorry, the vertebral artery right there is vertebral artery. Okay, passing through the foramen magnum. Okay, here's a shot of the meninges and brain. The outermost layer of the meninges is dura mater, which is made by two layers. Uh, but what we can see practically is the two layers are fused and it's not easily can be separated from, from each other. You can see the branches of the middle meningeal artery on the surface of the dura mater. And now we want to walk you through the um, actually dural sinuses. But before that, let me remove the dura from the, from the surface of the brain. Okay. So the first structure that we can see here is the Falk's cerebri, which is located between the cerebral hemispheres. Okay, moving backward, right there on the back, this one, we have the tentorium cerebelli, which is located between the occipital lobe and cerebellum. And down here, we have the Falk's cerebelli. Um, is the reflection of the dura between the uh, cerebellar hemispheres. Okay. Now, in regards to the sinuses, which are the spaces between two layers of the dura, on the top here, we have the superior sagittal sinus. I can pass actually my probe inside the sinus right here. Okay, and then on the inferior border of the false cerebri, we have the inferior sagittal sinus. Moving backward, at the junction of the tentorium cerebelli and false cerebri, we have the straight sinus right there. Now, on the posterior side, see that on the posterior border of the tentorium cerebelli, we have the transverse sinus, right there. See that the space is clearly demonstrated here, transverse sinus. And I go to the posterior aspect of the dura here, at the junction of the superior sagittal sinus and transverse sinus, right here, we have confluence of sinuses. Okay, so the sigmoid sinus actually is located in the posterior cranial 
fossa that we should be able to see inside the cranial cavity. Okay, now we'll remove the dura. Now the next layer that covers the surface of the brain is arachnoid, right there. Okay, and that is space under the arachnoid, right here, my probe actually goes to that space, is subarachnoid space, which is filled by the CSF and the, the branches of the, the arteries, the cerebral arteries in the subarachnoid space. When it comes to the other layer is the pia matter, which tightly attaches to the surface of the brain and is not easily can be separated from the surface of the brain in the specimen. In the midline of the cerebral hemispheres right here, um, let's zoom in here that we can see the better view of the arachnoid granulations. Okay, these are the arachnoid granulations which are protrusion of the arachnoid into the dural sinus. In this case, it's superior uh, sagittal sinus. In this sagittal section of the head, we want to actually focus on um, one of the reflections of the dura, tentorium cerebelli right here. So let's zoom here that we can have better view of the tentorium cerebelli right there, okay? Which is located between the occipital lobe and the cerebellum. We also can see the transverse sinus here, right there, transverse sinus between two layers of the dura mater. That's all about the cranial cavity and its contents. Have a great lab. Thank you.